Hey everybody, Christine from Panic Pixel here. Again, we've kind of changed positions this time around. Welcome to the other side of my room. So a couple of weekends ago, I watched the Final Fantasy XIV live action movie, Dad of Light, uh, as it's popularly known. But for some reason, they translated it to Brave Father Online here. I don't know what the deal is with that, but... So anyway, this movie is a pretty niche kind of movie. The theater that I went into, less than half of the seats were filled. They didn't even bother to have any ads in the movie because, I don't know, some sort of weird agreement between the cinema and the distributor or something like that. So as you may know, I am an active Final Fantasy XIV player. 5.1 just dropped and I really enjoyed the new Nier raid and also what's going on with the main story quest right now. I went into this movie before 5.1 came out and I actually really enjoyed it so I just wanted to kind of like tell you my thoughts on the movie and stuff like that. So for those of you who don't know, uh, this Dad of Light movie is basically based on an actual story uh, that happened in game. It was a series of blog posts by a player back in like the 1.0 days when the game was still sort of relatively new. Basically, this guy's father uh, suddenly retired or something and he decided in his dad's retirement that he would give him Final Fantasy XIV. He gave the game so they could kind of reconnect. Throughout the process of kind of reconnecting with his father, he didn't tell him his identity in-game and he kind of promised that he would only reveal himself once they beat the then very difficult boss, Twin Tanya. So if you're interested in reading the original blog post, Ritsubel's Piece of Eden blog actually has the translation for all the blog posts. Obviously, they changed uh, some aspects of the story to fit in with more of a mainstream movie kind of thing also. They had like a live action series a couple of years ago and that also kind of changed things a little bit to be more interesting for you know like a mainstream audience. So before watching this movie I did actually try to watch the live action series on Netflix but for some reason I just couldn't get myself to finish it. I went through three episodes and just kind of like fell off and didn't really want to watch it again. I felt like the pacing was kind of slow and I guess it's a bit of like a preference of the actor and how the character is portrayed but I just felt like I was getting annoyed a lot of the time with the character because of how passive he is and just like he's like oh like oh so meek and it's just like can you just can you just confront the problem? And I'm probably going to get a bit of hate on that because I do think a lot of people like the show. But like, I just personally didn't think that it was for me. So along those lines, I actually thought that the movie was a great way to experience the story. I felt like the pacing was actually really great. And the story beats, they managed to cover like most of the, like I guess, the main points of the story to actually you know drive in the impact of what happens and stuff i actually ended up crying a couple of times in the movie a bit of a spoiler here i guess so like two scenes kind of like you know just made me ball in the cinema the first was when uh so the main character's name is akio and the first was when akio's dad so he was having problems with like akio's sister having like a comedian boyfriend or something and he was like getting pissed off that she wasn't married, like wasn't interested in a man who um, could actually provide and stuff like that. I really like the scene where he ended up giving the guy a chance and realized that, you know, actually the dude's like really hardworking and he really cares. He went to like the comedy show. I don't know. I'm just like the kind of person who tends to cry when it comes to like apology kinds of themes in any sort of media so that was one scene that made me cry and the second scene I cried at was basically during the end when Akio's dad was talking about how the game had changed him as a person and that was like before Akio revealed himself so a bit more spoilers here so Akio's dad basically the reason why he retired was because he was diagnosed with cancer he couldn't work anymore the thing is, like, he spent his entire life working 
to the point that like he didn't really like develop a relationship with his family members you go from a life of like working you know that is that is where your value comes from and then you go to a life where like you don't work anymore you kind of don't know what your value is in society but like what really got to me was the fact that he was talking about how Final Fantasy 14 changed his life and how it actually gave him more hope and kind of like more of a reason to you know kind of overcome his like disease and the end of the movie, he basically decides to go through with his operation because they defeated Twin Tanya and he's like, I've defeated stronger foes before. And I just I just felt that like so so much. I've been kind of thinking about it, like how Final Fantasy Fourteen has actually changed the way I kind of behave in real life. And it might be like a little weird and uh, you know I've taken like media studies classes where they talk about how you know your identity online kind of affects your identity offline and vice versa and like I don't think there's a greater example of that than like me with Final Fantasy 14. So in Final Fantasy 14 there is a thing called being a mentor and like I've actually managed to renew my mentorship recently like congrats Congrats to me for all those hours I've spent on that game. Just being able to do dungeons in game and kind of like teach people how to do it more efficiently or how to like use their skills properly. It's kind of given me confidence in real life in like how to communicate with other people in terms of like, you know, delegating tasks or telling people what I need or like how to do things more efficiently. I find that a lot of the communication skills that I use in game, I mean, I think I've had them like even before I started playing, but doing it in game has given me enough practice that it actually like translates to my actual work. And I think it's pretty great. Yeah, so I I guess that's probably why like him talking about how Final Fantasy XIV has changed him. Like, really just just hit me in the feels. If I had anything to complain about, though, it would kind of be, like, just how cheesy it gets in certain parts of the movie. So I think one part that really kind of, like, had me cringing a little bit was, okay, so his dad gets um, gets admitted into the hospital because he kind of, like, collapses in the middle of the game and like that's when his family realizes that he has cancer and you know they're talking about like oh my god he has cancer kind of thing go to his room realizes he's not there as a family member you probably are worried about your dad so you know the family members try to look for him all over Tokyo I think it's set in Tokyo should be set in Tokyo uh yeah so they kind of like you know go around to different places looking for the dad and stuff and Akio is like just running trying to figure out where his dad is and he receives a call from his colleague who happens to play with him and she's like hey why aren't you online we're supposed to be defeating Tan- like Twin Tanya tonight yeah and he's like well you know I'm kind of busy right now and then she's she's like hey but your your dad's here and he's like what my dad my dad, he's supposed to be in the hospital or, or like, you know, where where is he? I think your first instinct in that sense would firstly to figure out how the heck he's online and where the heck he's online. But for some reason, Akio is just, he, he starts running and then they start kind of like going between his character running in game and then Aki running and then character running and then his Aki running. It's just like a weird like anime scene in a live action movie and it's just really weirdly translated in that sense. He's running back home instead of like trying to figure out where his dad is or like telling his his uh, his colleague to be like, you know, try to can you try and figure out where my dad is? No, he's just like, no, we have to defeat Twin Tanya and that's the only way we can find my dad. The most logical thing to do would be to find your dad, but he didn't do that. And then they had to do that weird, like, in-game versus, like, in-real-life parallel kind of scene cliche thing. And 
I just kind of was just like, oh my god. I had to close my eyes for a bit because I was just like, I can't believe this is happening and this is like, I'm sitting through this. A highlight that I forgot to mention was the fact that they had a lot of like in-game scenes kind of meshed with the live action and stuff. And basically these in-game scenes were like machinimas. And I think something that might kind of bug people a little bit if you play Final Fantasy XIV is the fact that they had to dramatize a bit of like some of the situation. So Akio would scream Greets! before like he starts kind of like going to like hit the bosses or like characters kind of like screaming hey like watch out for that AOE kind of thing and then you know their characters kind of, it kind of pans to the face of the character and they're like looking down oh oh and then oh and then they start doing like the dying emote and stuff so it's like it, it it behaves like a machinima so you kind of have to pause that whole like this can't be real kind of aspect to it what there's a phrase for that I can't figure out what the phrase is I'm it's been a long day. I guess another thing is that, like, another thing that you kind of suspend your disbelief. Is that is that the phrase? Like, they set this whole movie in, like, recent days, so kind of like in 2019, and they keep talking about how Twin Tanya is, like, a really super hard boss, but if you actually play the game, Twin Tanya is actually super easy if you've already reached max level. I guess you also have to suspend your disbelief and just kind of be like, hey, maybe they're all level 50 and they are struggling because they have minimum eye level and stuff. But that's just like a really, I don't know, that's, that's just being like really nitpicky. But anyway, the Final Fantasy XIV Dad of Light movie or Brave Father Online as they call it here, if you just kind of like, you know, kind of just kind of wince a little bit at the cheesiness and you kind of don't mind that little portion of cheesiness, just don't think about the fact that Tanya is actually really easy now. Just kind of take in the machinimas as they are rather than like, oh yeah, as like a realistic representation of like what things are like in game, then you're completely fine. And like this is an actually great movie with a lot of heart. I think it really showcases the beauty of the community in game and also, you know, how an MMO like Final Fantasy XIV can actually create positive change in your life and stuff like that. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Final Fantasy XIV That of Light movie. If you have watched the series or are going to watch the movie, do leave your thoughts down below in the comments. If you're interested in more gaming geek and tech ramblings from little old me, uh, be sure to click that um, subscribe button and hit that cute little bell for upload notifications. Once again, I am Christine for Panic Pixel. I hope you had a phenomenal week. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.